Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, thanks for having me here. So today I basically just want to uh, introduce our company. Uh, so um, App Explore. So it's a Malaysia homegrown game studio. Um, so uh, some of you may have not heard about us. Um, so let me just uh, continue. Okay, so we, we've been around uh, since 2011 uh, with four man team. And currently we have about 40 staff. So what we do, uh, we focus in uh, our own IP and uh, freemium mobile games. Uh, means uh, uh, freemium means free to download uh, with IAP, in-app purchase, and also IAA means uh, in-app ads. So we monetize uh, through in-app purchase and also advertisements. And uh, we got acquired in 2015 and uh, published in Australia uh, under ICANT. Uh, I'll talk about ICANT later uh, in 2016. So far, we have developed about 12 games uh, with over 40 million downloads uh, or more now. Uh, and then we've been awarded top developers by Google Play. Okay, just a bit uh, about us. Uh, so since 2011, so it's, it's, uh, it's our 10th anniversary uh, this year, in fact, this month. So just to show some of our photo, uh, the first you see uh, four of us, uh, basically 2011, set up the company. And then we attended some event, won some awards. Uh, here, basically, is uh, our small uh, studios. Um, uh, it's under incubator, actually supported by MDEC uh, during the time, 2012, 13. Um, then we've been to uh, some event, and here's our team uh, in a smaller office, and then a bigger team, and this is our team today. Okay. Uh, so the team, this was taken, the photo was taken about uh, two years ago. I think that was before COVID. So we hope we can do that again, you know, after COVID or the pandemic over. And here are some of the games. Um, so they are actually in order. If you look at the games, uh, our very first uh, on your right bottom is our Lightopus, Sporus, uh, Ellen Hive, and Cape Boy, uh, Morphish Hunters, uh, Crab War, Ellen Path, Tor, Lightway, Musketeer, and Closer. So these are the games that we, we developed uh, in house, all in house. So, um, okay. Uh, just to highlight a few of the games, some you might have played the game and might not know it's actually developed by local uh, Malaysians. Uh, because uh, from time to time, I come across uh, people come to me and say, oh, uh, you know, we, we come across this game and didn't realize actually developed by a local game studios. So uh, we have Crab Wars, uh, Light Away here, and Musketeers, and Crosta. So Crosta is our latest game. Um, it's currently in early access now. Uh, Musketeer, we just launched it about uh, six months ago. Um, okay. Um, so I, I want to talk about a bit about um, the game development, right? So we show you the game and uh, um, some of you might have curious uh, how we actually develop the games uh, locally here. So uh, to start up with, you know, uh, market research on our training mobile games, uh, what are the games that we want to do for our next title. And um, then we always target on the development duration, uh, currently 12 to 16 months. And we started when we started off a uh, very small team, and um, we cannot afford 12 months, six, 16 months. So we always go for like six to eight months, anything that under a year. Uh, uh, currently, we uh, targeted about 12 to six months, even like two years' time uh, for the development for bigger games. Then we shortlist, and then finally, genre and gameplay. Then we move on to the game design. And then we do uh, prototype iterations, um, you know, a few prototypes and see whether the game works or not. If not, then we go back to drawing board on game design. And then when we finance the prototype, then we have to design the uh, backend, uh, server architect design. Uh, so we are on AWS, Amazon. Uh, some of the smaller game, we don't actually have that server architect design. So uh, they are like single player, very casuals. And then we move on to team and concept design and then uh, integrations. Uh, integration means you integrate the uh, in the purchase, uh, ads, advertisement, and analytics, and social login, and whatnot. 
then uh, we have alpha tests. Uh, so we let people to test again uh, before release. Uh, alpha means close, uh, means only invited people. Uh, usually we do in-house uh, and also some invite some uh, uh, beta, beta tester. Then we move on to release early SS, uh, means open beta. So everyone can actually test it and then give it back. But uh, the difference is uh, early SS, uh, when people test it and they comment, the comment only sent to us, it will show up on the Google Play Store and also the rating uh, because in early SS. Uh, okay, then finally, uh, global release. Okay. So this basically, uh, hold on. Okay, so this is actually uh, uh, our, just to give an idea, this is our game design uh, pipeline, uh, part of the game design uh, to show the whole game flow and also the game economy, how the game works. Uh, okay, uh, so generally uh, for internal closed beta, we spend about uh, two months. Uh, so we, once we finish the game, we test it in-house and make sure everything's good. And then we invite some friends to test it. And once we uh, feel comfortable, then we release it on early access on Google Play. Typically two to three months, just to let people play it. And then we actually have a, a limit on user. Uh, so we, when we release, we probably limit to like about uh, uh, 20,000 people. So once hit 20,000, uh, nobody can download it. So basically we want to test out the user retention. Uh, performance and bugs and all that. So uh, when we feel comfortable, we release more uh, you know, people uh, that can actually download during early access. Then uh, we kickstart our marketing. Uh, in fact, during early access, we have to um, start doing our own marketing already. Then uh, next phase would be pre-registration on Google Play and App Store, typically six to eight weeks. So what happened is uh, once you done with the game on early access, uh, we put it on pre-registration. Um, the reason is uh, the intention uh, for pre-registration is to get attention, to get more people to actually pre-register the game. And typically for the pre-registration, we will give up a award. Like let's say you pre-register, uh, when the game is released, you download and you will get some goodies. And then we move on to global release. And of course, uh, once we release, uh, we, feel, we see the game perform really well, then we will localize the game in more languages, you know, and then target more uh, different country. So, so far, uh, our most target, uh, our most user uh, player are from US and followed by Europe's, and then like Taiwan, Japan, and then South Asia. So uh, our main market uh, is not in Malaysia per se. Uh, so most of the users are from US, Europe's. Okay, when we, we have the game developed, of course, uh, marketing is uh, very important, right? Without marketing, you, you, you just cannot uh, push the game. So uh, this, this is just a flow uh, for our marketing. So first, uh, we, we actually pitch our game to Google Play, right? So even early, during early access. So the reason is uh, if the Google Play or App Store they really like your game, they will feature your games on uh, early access. So if you realize that when you go to Google Play and uh, there's a category called early access, right? So these are the games that will be upcoming. Uh, so Google will feature those games. So uh, most of the time, um, we, when we uh, pitch a game to Google Play, they will help feature our games there. So that will give, uh, get, us, uh, get us some downloads. Then, uh, of course, uh, you create social media. So we have Discord, we have Facebook, Reddit, and website. And then uh, once early is finished, then we, when we move on to pre-registration, we pitch to Google Play and App Store again. So uh, again, they have the pre-registration uh, category uh, featuring uh, on Google Play front page. So uh, yeah, we, we basically want to hope Google Play and App Store will feature our games. And then, of course, we pre, uh, create the pre-registration marketing campaign. Uh, I just mentioned just now, uh, we actually have pre-registration reward giving out. So that's actually one of the questions that uh, uh, want people to come to down uh, pre-register the game uh, before we release the game. And then finally, uh, global release. Again, we will pitch to Google Play and App Store for global release featuring. So if we, again, 
on Google Play and App Store, they have a different category uh, where uh, they feature the games like early access, pre registrations and then global release. So we want to grab every single opportunity available uh, because once the game get featured, you get a lot of downloads from there. Uh, then we start pro promoting uh, a promotion campaign using our in-house tool. Uh, we have developed in-house tool uh, basically to cross promote across all our games, right? So, uh, so once we release a new game, we can actually push an ads, uh, we call interteacher ads to all our existing uh, user. Uh, so if they play some of our older game, uh, when they launch the game, they will see a pop up and then uh, the power will lead them to our new game. So that's one good way to actually do a, a, a very free uh, UA, user acquisitions. Then of course we do a press releases and then we pitch the game to journalists for review, uh, like website, YouTubers and whatnot. And then uh, we start user acquisitions campaign, Facebook ad mob. Uh, we actually did not start uh, we did not do any user acquisition campaign until like last two years, you know. Uh, in the first five, four years, uh, it's it just very expensive to do UM, uh, user acquisitions. Um, so we didn't have the budget to do it. So we we only can do, you know, whatever that on the top, we pitch to Google's and do uh, uh, pitch, pitch to uh, game generators and we, we hopefully they can cover our games. Um, so even we didn't even have the uh, cross uh, in-house tool because that only developed like uh, you know last two years. So this is a pre-registration milestone reward that I just uh, talked about. Uh, so what happened to this is uh, when we launched Marcus Musketeer last year. So we actually set a milestone like uh, you know when you have fifty thousand people pre-register, you we will give away like two hundred crystals to the pre-register user. And then uh, we set a different milestone. Uh, so this game actually last year, we hit uh, over 1 million pre-registrations. Okay, uh, this screenshot is our in-house cost promotion tools. Uh, so what you see here, uh, basically uh, we put an ad, this is the ads that we, we show uh, to all our game. So meaning when you're playing a crack ball, our older game, for example, and then when we release this game, we will push this ad to the game, right? When you launch a game, you see the ad. And then uh, what you see here also, uh, we have like click through rate, and then how many will, how, uh, how many click, and then we have AP testing, uh, which is very important. Uh, so, so to, to um, identify which creative actually um, to give a better result. And, uh, and this is, important because once we have this data, we can actually use a better creative uh, for our UA as well. So when you do a UA, you know, you're actually spending uh, like user positions on Facebook and whatnot, other, uh, other platform. Uh, creative, very important, right? Because uh, better creative give you a, a, a cheaper CPI. So um, yeah. Okay. So when we release the game and uh, part of marketing, then uh, if you if you search Musketeer on Google, and uh, you should see uh, you know uh, all the link, all the related, game related uh, result on the page, and if you don't see it, means your campaign fail, right? So you you people don't actually discover your game. So if you type in uh, Google App Explorer, Google your game title. You should, uh, this is what happened. You see uh, our games here. Uh, uh, videos, uh, reviews, and whatnot. And just to show, these are some of the uh, highlight or features uh, from uh, App Store. This is the uh, App Store uh, featuring uh, Musketeer last year. And then this uh, same uh, popular game in Malaysia. So they highlight some of the popular games. Uh, so we actually glad to be included in part of it. And then yes, we also have uh, Google Play, came uh, from South Asia. Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, of course, support, right? Support is so important. Uh, um, when we were very small, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, as we grow, uh, we realize that support, you know, uh, is, is very crucial, right? So uh, when you have a lot of player, a user, um, 
they they will come any channel, right? They send you email. Uh, we ask them to send support. They send to info, right? So you, every email you have to monitor. So we basically support uh, uh, through it send us. Uh, we have ticketing system, and then uh, we have uh, um, staff actually working communicate with all players across all our social media, uh, like Discord, Facebook, Twitter, whatnot. Uh, then uh, we have to also respond the uh, comment from Google Play and App Store, uh, and it's very important because you know typically uh, a lot of players when they see a box, then they will give you a comment like bad rating, like one star. And uh, and then it, it, when you release the game, it's not in their language, you know, they're like, let's say they're from uh, uh, Portuguese, you know, they're like, oh, there's no Portuguese one star. You know? So there are a lot of unreasonable uh, rating. So we just have to, you know, uh, uh, respond to them and hopefully uh, can actually turn that one star rating to, you know, like four. Uh, then um, to maintain games rating above four, because what, this is so crucial uh, because anything that uh, below 4.0, Google Play or App Store, they won't feature again, right? So we have to maintain the rating. And whenever we see like one star rating, we actually respond to the player and, and try to address their issues, you know, uh, explain to them, hopefully they can, uh, you know, turn the one star to at least three or four star, right? Okay, so uh, coming back to this topic, for our games, uh, casual games, because we do mobile game, casual game, um, is we don't see a lot of people doing like live streaming, uh, uh, especially single mobile, uh, casual mobile game. Right? So you see live streaming probably on multiplayer game where they play with friends and uh, uh, having fun. But for us, um, because most of game are single player, uh, casual, offline, and uh, our latest game like Crosstar uh, or, or Musketeer uh, is off online game, uh, but like say uh, most of our games, uh, people will just do like um, preview, right? Uh, show gameplay. Uh, and for example, this one here. Um, so Nick and Knight, uh, they actually sh he also showcased our game uh, back in like 2016. Uh, he is a walkthrough game. They show uh, basically uh, how play the games and. Uh, Okay. And then also crack wall, uh, same thing. Uh, it's uh, the show gameplay, uh, the features and, and all that. And then of course, uh, when someone actually hit a really high score and they want to show off, they also do that. Okay. Okay, uh, then uh, some YouTubers, they actually uh, showcase the game and top tips, the tutorial and show how did he actually optimize the game. Uh, then beginner guides, and then uh, so we we actually fortunate enough to actually uh, uh, work with uh, Kim Junji. I'm not sure whether you guys know Kim Junji. If you if you just Google, he's the uh, pretty much the god, you know, of uh, of art. So he can draw uh, virtually anything. Like like the one that he did here, uh, live shooting. Uh, he draw from no reference, no outline, you know, just by having brush. And then, uh, so um, if you go Google uh, this title, you, you can see the whole stream about like 14. It's a fast forward. It's a fast forward. Okay, and uh, we also have an Instagram filter. Uh, so uh, the mask here. Uh, so this is something new that we just pushed out like uh, a few weeks ago. Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, just to give you an idea about uh, eye candy. Uh, so Apex is actually under eye candy. Uh, like I say, uh, in the early slide, we we got uh, invited, I mean, it, it, we got acquired uh, by uh, eye candy back in 2016. So they invested in us, and then since then we actually grow, and uh, we have also acquired a few uh, studio. So we have studio in uh, Singapore, and we also have a studio in uh, Joy uh, Joyce. They are in uh, Jakarta, and we have a few other brand as well. If you go uh, Google Play and search for some of these title uh, brand, uh, it should have uh, different games titles. Okay, I think uh, that that cover pretty much uh, what we do, uh, App Explorer, uh, and also I Candy.
Okay, uh, are we moving to uh, Q and sessions? Okay, uh, so I see some question here. Uh, can you share more page to Google Play? It's mandatory. Okay, so to answer this question, uh, uh, of course it's not mandatory, right? So uh, it is a, it's a chance for you to actually feature your game, right? So if your game is really good, um, uh, and if you pitch to Google, there, there is a chance that your game will get featured and feature will actually bring you a lot of download. So that's the key, right? So we, we, when we started off uh, our company, when you have no marketing budget and you know, that's your best bet, right? So that's why we, we focus very much on the quality itself. So we actually uh, uh, make sure that we grab this opportunity, right? So we have to uh, make sure the game is good enough to uh, actually pitch and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, get featured by Google. And yeah, uh, yeah. I hope that answers your question. I don't think I can move the page, but oh no, yeah. Uh, it's uh no. Yes, actually, the the uh for Google Play and App Store, you do need to pitch, right? So you can get the uh, contact thing even from Amtech. Uh, Google Play, uh, they share out their, their email contact. You can actually uh contact them. Uh, the share. I, I believe they also have a link. Uh, to to share your game to them, uh, and to to tell them uh, this is your game and what's coming up, and then they if they're interested and like the game, they will come back to you. Uh, next question: Job vacancy? Uh, yes, uh, we do. Uh, just go to our website appexplore.com, and then under career page, we have currently we have about like quite a bit of, of opening in fact. Uh, and just that so you know, uh, we also do a core development uh, currently with uh, Lemon Sky. So some of you might, uh, I'm sure you have heard about Lemon Sky. So we do a core development with them. And currently we also building a new team uh, to do a, a, a multiplayer 3D mobile games. I know what used to create the game. Okay, may I know uh, what was used to create the game? So we're using Unity and uh, we do not use Firebase. Of Flutter. Uh, so these are the web tools uh, that you mentioned. Uh, we we mainly use Unity at the moment. Uh, early day we actually use Cocoa, but what we found is a uh, Cocoa uh, is challenging when you want to update, especially you know, Google Play and App Store. They uh, very frequently they have a like, new SDK uh, that you need to update. You know, every two years. So Unity gives us a better, uh, uh, I would say, a pipeline. Say social media like Facebook, Instagram, Discord group, we can follow. Yeah, it, uh, you can actually go to, uh, I think you go to YouTube just for App Explore and you go to uh, any channel, just search for App Explore, A-P-P-X-P-L-R-E, you should find, able to find us there. Uh, see, you how do you get it started? Uh, yeah, we are using Unity. How, how do you guys start up? Like I mentioned, uh, we started up using Cocos uh, back then, like 2011, there wasn't Unity at all, right? So even at the time when we started, the, there was no Google Play, uh, so only App Store. Started playing a game since 2011. Thank you so much. Uh, Unity game, personally, I love the game. The graphic actually. Thank you. Uh, and we, uh, we we don't really uh, how about Unity and Unreal game engine comparison. Uh, I think you if you Google you can find ton of comparison just like you know uh, Apple versus Android. <laughs> so uh, for us we use Unity uh, typically because we we uh, do all two D games. So we don't really need like Unreal engine. Um, and I think at the time when we started using Unity because there are like ton of extensions uh, for 2D, you know, so that's how we started out using a uh, Unity. Is there in specific inspiration for the concept uh, key up the or so? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of artists. 
So all the artists have come up with a different uh, concept. Uh, uh, so we basically give them like this uh, game direction and then every artist will come up with their own style, right? So uh, we don't actually establish the style in the first place because what you establish, establish the one style, mean all the artists have to follow the style. Then it's no point having like, you know, five, six artists working on the game. So we usually just to uh, uh, give the game direction and then different artists come, come up with a different style. So from there, we can at least uh, to look at which style fit the game better, then we will go for the style. Uh, the game sound effects are uh, used in the game world there, outsource to you guys and audio technology. Huh? Okay, so we do everything in house except sound, right? So it's just not feasible to having a, a, a hidden house uh, probably in future, who knows, right? Uh, when we grow even bigger, we might need one. Uh, but uh, so when we started out, uh, like especially our first game, uh, so what first two game, what we did, uh, we like no money, you know, for outsourcing. Uh, so we do, uh, we actually go to online and search for all those uh, music library. Uh, but we do not want just to get the music library, right? Because you, you might have the same sound, uh, you know, uh, with different games, right? So what we did actually, uh, we really liked the game. We uh, then we actually reach out to the same uh, composer. We just asked them like, oh, can you actually give us a very cheap rate using this music and but you twist it to make it unique, right? So you uh, that's how we actually did it. Then we managed to contact a few uh, freelancer through the uh, uh, you know uh, the online, and then uh, typically some some of them they offer really reasonable rate. So that's how we did it. Uh, uh, but for now, I mean, for our latest game, we actually engage like professionals, uh, the game house, uh, like we work with uh, locals and also uh, a studio in Singapore. Okay, uh, have you guys tried out Gordo engine before you? Uh, no, I think because we started with uh, uh, Unity, like early day, right? So currently we just stick with Unity, uh, especially uh, we develop our own uh, like plugin in house, so all the plugin uh, are ready, you know, in uh, using Unity. Meaning to say, two D games more toward using Unity because of their capability with plugin support now. Uh, uh, not necessary, I think. Uh, but uh, when they when we use Unity, because there was a plugin that actually we can use for two D. Uh, that's how we actually started. Uh, but I think the latest uh, Unity, they have the, you know, the tools uh, built in already for 2D. Would that be like an open world type game like Diablo released from App Explorer? Uh, no, answer is no. Uh, because we only focus uh, on the uh, casual and to make core uh, mobile game. And especially, you know, uh, Diablo, you really need a team like 50 to 100 people to develop and, you know, a few years. And it's a very big investment. And uh, when we started, we only had four people you know, grew to eight, 10. Uh, it's just, it's not feasible. Uh, it's impossible for us to actually uh, to develop anything like that. Um, and in fact, I really admire Jeremy, uh, the, you know, the game uh, that you just saw uh, be before my presentation, uh, they, they literally spent 10 years. I, I like really respect them, you know? So it's very challenging uh, to, to actually spend the amount of time to download the games. Uh, okay, uh, the engine is insane. Okay, is it according to game? Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Any, any more questions? I think we have about, uh, how much time do we have? Like five minutes? How much budget to involve this game project? Okay, uh, so how, question is how much budget to involve in this game project? So uh, currently uh, our project, it will be around, uh, I would say a million ringgit. So we be uh, for for our games. Uh, currently, we have like two pipeline, right? So we're working on two game uh, together. Uh, uh, take about twelve months to sixteen months. Um, so if you figure, you just do the math. You know, uh, twenty people 
or 10, 15 people on a team or on the game for about 16 months, then you can roughly, you know, count how much. And uh, again, we only do our in-house game. So we, uh, we don't do uh, outsourcing. Thank you for rating all five stars. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, do we have more time for questions? Is there any more update for Musketeer? The game looks great. Yeah, uh, our team is working on uh, you know new features always constantly. Uh, so there will be a queue system coming up. Uh, so that's that's for Musketeer. And currently we focus very much on Crossar. Uh, so uh, Crossar is our next big title. Uh, so it will be released in June, probably released in June. I hope you guys can actually uh, go and try it uh, uh, now. In fact, uh, next. Tuesday, we will close the early access uh, for pre-registration. So that's our next phase. Um, so uh, if you want, you can go try to cross that. Uh, if you play, you know, like all day when you play uh, Pirate King, uh, Coin Master. So these are the uh, our cross that is very similar. Uh, uh, it will be it, it, it will be a multi social multiplayer games. Um, so go download. Try the game. Uh, so we close the early access next uh, next Tuesday, and then we'll move on to uh, pre registrations Can you create MLPG game with ultra graphics? I'm sure we can, but it's not our goal. Uh, I'll go here to uh, to to focus on the uh, um, casual mobile games. Just a general question: What is the minimum salary as game developer? <laughs> so good question. Uh, I think for game developer like programmer, uh, so um, just to give it a range, you know, uh, fresh grads two five to three, and then with a few years experience, you can probably make like three to four, four, uh, four point five something like that. Uh, you will really experience, you know, you you can uh, go up to like seven to ten. Uh, so, yeah. When will your team will release 3D games? Okay, so when will your team will release 3D games? Uh, for, for App Expo, we don't actually uh, do 3D games. Uh, that's why we uh, partners or core developing uh, a 3D game, a 3D mobile games uh, with Lemon Sky. So that's our new venture. Uh, so currently we kick, kick started the project uh, and we're hiring as well. Uh, so, uh, so look forward for the 3D mobile games, uh, hopefully by next year. How many people are put usually in a team for a new project? Uh, for for project, uh, currently for especially for Crossa or a Musketeer, we have about uh, fifteen people, one five, and uh, fifteen people does not include the uh, marketing team. Okay, do we have more time or questions? Since the database about streaming, what about for my game streaming? That's a very tough for me. Uh, like I mentioned in the slide, right? Uh, okay, the, sorry, yeah, the question is, since today's topic is about streaming, uh, live streaming, uh, what would be your advice on game streamer? Okay, so just to share a bit, um, we focus on mobile game development. Uh, we don't do live streaming, uh, but for today's topics, uh, we just want to give an uh, uh, introduction about the local game studio. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, most of games, they are not like, you know, competitive game. And uh, so we don't actually have any uh, uh, player live streaming our game. And, but we do have uh, like YouTuber influencers uh, showcase our game on YouTube's uh, creating like, you know, uh, the topics like uh, a walkthrough, a tutorial and whatnot. Is what way we can support 
in what way we can support developer. Oh yes, uh, in what way we can support local developers, especially right. So uh, we, we hope if you follow us when we download the game, uh, when we release any new game, you guys can download the game. You know, give us good rating. That would help a lot, right? So that will actually push, you know, uh, 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 our ratings up. And uh, again, rating means you we got more chance to feature uh, to be features, and uh, those are support that we can get, you know, uh, and to, of course, to play our game, to really like uh, our local mid games. Any PC, invest. any PC hardware and software to invest. Uh, yes, hardware, software is expensive. Uh, actually for, for mobile game, right? Uh, software is not so expensive because we only use Photoshop and uh, Unity. Right. Uh, of course, other tools uh, uh, like Google and online tools, uh, because it's not like three D. We don't pay for like expensive three D program. You know. Uh, uh, but in terms of uh, computer wise, it's a big investment because uh, we have to have Mac uh, for the development. Uh, so every programmer have to use a Mac because a Mac expensive. Right. So. Uh, uh, reason is because uh, when you want to export uh, to an um, app store, you have to have a Mac, right? Thank you for for all the support. So we really need uh, everyone's support to you know to highlight our local games, uh, to get more people know about our games. Uh, and again, uh, for all our game, uh, most of user base are in US, Europe, and uh, we don't really focus much on uh, like South Asia and local, uh, mainly because uh, I think in general, uh, casual game uh, uh, like, or our especially single player uh, don't do really well in South Asia, right? People maybe play the game, they don't pay, they don't, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't really like spend money on the game. So uh, that's, that's why we, it's very difficult for us to actually focus for Malaysia market. So if you really realize, right, if you go to Google Play and check on the top closing, you see most of the games that actually do really well in Malaysia are like multiplayer games, like very hardcore game. Uh, so for us, it's very difficult for us actually to, to, to get the Malaysia people to spend on our games. I think I have to look at music and to compose new music for the game. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, so we we constantly looking for like uh, a company or individual to collaborate to do our uh, uh, the music for the games. But the thing is, right, the, you can only have one music for one game, right, or, or like maybe two, right. But we only develop like two games in a year or plus, right. So, so uh, it's it's very challenging uh, to actually you know to to actually do uh, music for games. Thank you, thank you for all the support. Latest PC hardware and software game. Okay, cool. I I think that's conclude the presentation. Thank you.